Well, I'm here at the wood yard. We got snow coming tonight. I have a lofty goal of trying to get the rafters on this building and then maybe covering the building with a tarp. Just so I don't have to snubble show again. Uh, just so I don't have to snubble. Snubble? Just so I don't have to shovel snow again. Anyways, that's my plan. If I can cut as many rafters as possible and then uh, find a tarp big enough and cover this baby up. That's kind of my goal for the day. But uh, if I can get that done, that's a good freaking day. Hey, thanks for stopping. We'll see you at the end. So what I'll do is I'll take the speed square. There's my pivot point right there. And this is my pitch. So I'm going to take that to a four. I'll mark my line. And that's the angle I need to cut. And they're going to be parallel to each other. So on the other end, I'm going to flip it. So when it goes up against my ridge board, um, they'll be parallel to each other. So in this scene, I incorrectly explain how to use a speed square. I put it on the wrong four. So you can see there are two fours on the hypotenuse of that triangle. Uh, you want to use the top cut common. I did it right when I was doing the job, but I explained it incorrectly. It's right here and here. So here I'm just marking my bird's mouth, starting my screws. This worked out really well, having those three and a half, four inch screws. I actually leave the rafter up a little bit off the ridge, pretty consistently. So I cut all of these boards to the correct length. So everything is gonna be consistent. Before I cut rafters, I cut all my two by fours. This is all rough cut sawn lumber. It's just a matter of making two by fours. That nifty rafter length calculator. All right, so the speed square, we're doing a 412 pitch. And you'll see on the speed square, there's a four right there. This is your pivot point. So I'll stick it on the tallest one, and I'll rotate that four all the way to the edge of the board. So here we go, pivot point. I got that four right here. That four is lined up. So what I'll do is I will mark right here with a sharpie lid in my mouth and holding the viewer in my hand I just mark it right here and then I'm going to do that the opposite angle so these lines will be parallel because one will go against the ridge beam and one will actually have the fascia on it which is that stuff that the drip edge hangs over so that's the plan. So when I say tallest one, I mean if the board doesn't have a perfectly um, perpendicular cut, I stick the pivot point on the tallest point because no matter what, I'm going to trim some off. So that's what I mean on the tallest one. That is maple farmer carpentry talk. Uh, so every two feet, uh, I have a ra uh, rafters. So I have to have one for each side. Uh, so there was 13, so I need 26 total. It is always faster to do one operation. I learned this from uh, the fellow that sold me the bottling line for our maple syrup operation. He said a human can do more than 60 actions a minute if they only have to do one thing. But as soon as you add multiple tasks, it slows way down. You're actually better off paying people to each do that task and production will go much faster. So in this scenario, I'm better off marking them all in one action and then starting again and cutting them all. If you mark, cut, mark, cut, it is not as efficient.
here's the interesting thing is once I cut one side, I have to make sure I cut the other side in the right angle. So it can get tricky. It is not that difficult to cut, um, you know, your rafter angle uh, the, the wrong way on another end. I did it on one of them and then I really had to concentrate and put everything in the right direction so I would do it correctly. Sometimes when you make a copy of a copy, it's just not as good as the first one. off the edge there this extra piece get the saws off but I have a top rail all the way around top plate whatever you call it so now I can start setting trusses rafters start setting rafters so here I'm cutting the bird's mouth you can see I will take the circular saw to the line but I will always finish the cut with the reciprocating saw I don't like going past the line it kind of weakens it I don't know, uh, that's just me. You actually see that uh, we space the uh, stud walls at 24 inches on center. So I just went right over top of the each stud with a rafter and just made it easier, I guess. this side right here finish it like how this 12 and a half by 25 foot shed worked out um, I like how the math you know worked out and with 24 inch on center I like it like if we just made this size all the time it would be great that's it 
that's it. <laughs>